Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 476. Could mood disorders be caused by hormonal decline? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Focus of our conversation this week is that we attended a, a medical conference, the AMMG, American, uh, well, I always forget. What Age I, Management Medical Group. Age Management Medical Group. The group of thousands of doctors worldwide who specialize in what is now being called age management medicine. The goal of which is to help you live the longest, healthiest life possible for you. What can we do that we didn't know to do years ago? What new things are available? How do they work? How do doctors learn? I mean, lots of presentations and uh, panel discussions and group meetings where they share with each other the knowledge that they're learning in their various practices and research. So we had a, a physician uh, give a presentation at this conference about how historically women were diagnosed when, when they became perimenopausal or menopausal, which were terms of debate for a long time. Uh, that they were often diagnosed with anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, mood disorders of all kinds, depression, depression uh, and, and the sort of generic response of medicine was, well, if you're a woman of a certain age, these things happen to you, and you need to figure out how to live with them because we don't have an answer. This is just part of getting old. And now that is not what women are told and is not what doctors believe, and especially the doctors that go to these particular conferences. So she was giving a presentation that Dr. Moff and I both attended, and we kept being very pleasantly surprised because many of the things that she was saying and presenting research to support were things that Dr. Moffin's been saying for at least 15 years mm -hmm. and, and that her patients have benefited uh, in terms of her treatment of them with regard to these issues. Just because you go through menopause doesn't mean you have to become emotionally disturbed or mentally deficient. Your, your brain doesn't work the way you want it to. You can't remember things the way you normally remember things. Uh, th that happens to a lot of women who go through menopause. It also happens to men, but we're, today we're not talking about men. Uh, and they used to be diagnosed as depressed or with, with anxiety issues or bipolar disorder. Or just plain crazy. Or, ju or, just, or yeah, that's, that's what they were The just layman's kind of term, called. you're crazy as hell. Well, yeah. I mean, and doctors, when they're not talking to them, would right. say things I've like that. I've got this crazy woman that's coming. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that's the, that was the lingo. And when I, when I trained, yeah. they basically, if women were acting outside the norm... They would call them crazy, depressed, anxious, or try to give us some medications. Like in the 70s, they gave Valium to everybody. So women were just walking around, not able to do <laughs> in anything. Days. In they, had days. These, they had these mood disorders where they would be, be agitated. They would be upset. They'd get angry. They'd well, start yeah, crying. Yeah, because they didn't have hormones. They, didn't have, they had PMS. And, then, and PMS was also not till the year 2000 even considered a hormonal disorder. Right. It was considered a psychiatric disorder, which is really crazy. And that was by doctors in the American College of OBGYN. So right. that was something that was really misdiagnosed. So now more and more doctors are starting to accept that, that, that the explanation that women just get crazy as they get older, <laughs> that they have these mood issues as a, a factor of life. <laughs> and and it, it's sort of our burden to have to put up with you because you're pain in the neck. No, it's our burden. We have to, well, it's your we burden have to, to put up with it. ourselves. We're but we have labeled. our own burdens having experienced you experiencing really, it. Really? We're labeled well, and then we're treated exactly. differently. And then yes. and we're given all kinds of drugs that change our brain. So I I think probably we're the victims here. Oh. Not you guys. Oh, sh no, no, we're more. <laughs> uh, so so what happens, though, as they're trying to make this transition? And they say, okay, how do we, how do we get a, a grasp of what we're looking at? So then they turn... Being doctors, being scientists, they turn to lab sheets. Let's mm -hmm. run a bunch of blood tests. We'll get lab, lab numbers. We'll figure out what's normal, what's normal for these people. And then we'll look at your blood and say, well, well, you're not normal because this is out of whack. 
-hmm. and we'll give you medicine to fix this. Mm -hmm. And so some of these women were getting as many as 14 different medicines to mm -hmm. try to treat these various mood-related uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, well, we've got this in hand. We're, we're, this is working. This is the answer. Psychiatrists use groups of Psychotropic symptoms. Psychotropic drugs. Well, yep. no, they use different groups of symptoms. They don't so much use blood yeah. tests. Blood tests are actually an advancement upon, mm. you know, psychiatric diagnosis is basically talking to someone and finding out from what they say what symptoms they have and do they fit in the depression category, the anxiety category, the ADD category. Right. So they're using questions and checklists to diagnose, which, which is just part of psychiatry. You can't really do a test to see if somebody's depressed. You right. have to diagnose it by history. But then other doctors were looking at numbers, and the numbers looked normal okay. for people who were menopausal because the numbers are considered, mm -hmm. they make the numbers different for, for people who are menopausal. They but, make them... But, but So the complication for okay. that in treating women mm -hmm. is that the normals that they used on the lab sheets weren't set for women. They were set or, for men. Or they were set for... The your same age, age cohort. Right. So, so you are you are evaluated against your age cohort. If you're in your fifties, you're evaluated against other fifty year old women. If you're in your seventies, you're evaluated against other seventy year old Meaning women. Meaning, if you have no estrogen, that's normal. It's right. not normal. It's average. <laughs> it means everybody your age doesn't have estrogen, so that's okay. That's not okay kind because like we're old, healthy old when we're question. young and we have estrogen. Did you ever have this before? Yeah, well, you got it again. That would be $100. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so. So, but now they have treatments for it because what they discovered in the process of doing that is that it wasn't the lab normals and mm -hmm. it wasn't the blood test numbers that they could just balance playing chemistry set, mm -hmm. that it was the symptoms that mm -hmm. they started looking at in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the symptoms. And then they began to ask the question, well, what if it's hormonal? What if the hormones that women lose as they age are contributing to these. If we replace the hormones, and then that comes back to the question of if, if we replace it and compare the women against a norm for young, healthy women mm -hmm. who haven't hit this stage of life and aren't having these, these symptomatic presentations, mm -hmm. if we can restore their hormone levels to those levels, what happens? And what mm -hmm. happens almost universally is that these women who are on up to 14 different medicines to treat anxiety and mood disorders often can come off of all those medicines mm -hmm. if they get their hormone balance restored. That's right. But then you get a sidebar challenge because doctors who don't know what you know, who haven't kept up with the changes, who are old school doctors, will They're look at your patients what they and say, in med school. oh my God, she's going to kill you. Because she, because you've got estrogen, you shouldn't have estrogen. <laughs> yeah, you've your got age, too much you're not supposed to have that. You know, because at your age, you shouldn't be making that. Well, you're not making it. We're giving it to you so you can turn the clock back and actually feel normal again. I had, I had a doctor's family member come in, and uh, he's a doctor who actually is trained to use hormones as uh, different hormones than I than I treat endocrinology. Right. And she came in and she said. I wish you'd talk to him. I feel completely better. And I was on all these other drugs, and now I'm off. And now I feel completely better. So it's my hormones. It's not that I have depression, anxiety, or something else. It's that I just needed my hormones back. Now I'm me. Would you talk to him? I said, could you talk to him? Because <laughs> I'm not sure he's going he's gonna to listen to me My wife that. says to me, I'm not moody. You make me angry. Well, that that's, happens uh, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... So the question that I had was, well, what about men? Because I know we were listening for women, and that's the <laughs> primary focus of the conversation today. But, but what I realized, and I, and I thought after the presentation of Dr. Stoker, and we were, we were talking about this stuff, that I was trained in school years ago that uh, men attempt suicide, commit suicide four to six times more regularly than mm -hmm. women do. But that women are diagnosed as depressed six times more often than men. So that's two problems. That's a problem that we're ignoring depression in men because we don't want to label them. Right. But it's so easy to just give that de that label to women. Well, so yeah. they're overdiagnosed and men are underdiagnosed. Depression is not really a masculine diagnosis. You you, you have these these yeah. memes among men, you know, of the poor depressed guy sitting in the corner. But you know, why is it a woman's diagnosis? It's well, because we've been so the cultural focused on messaging has that been, men are normal and women aren't, and so. Well, men are normal if they behave like real men, uh, That's true. whatever that means. Yeah. But so what I, what I was taught many years ago 
is that the reason for the disparity in the diagnosis wasn't a differentiation in, in depression. Men were depressed, women were depressed. Mm -hmm. It was it, well, how we labeled it. So men self-medicated with alcohol and oh, were found true. regarded as alcoholic six times higher than women. Right. Even though some women also drank, but <laughs> women and, don't and had it. those issues. <laughs> well, they they drank at home. They weren't yeah. out. They didn't yeah. get fired from their jobs because mm -hmm. they were drunk. Uh, so what what they concluded is depression levels are the same. Men medicate with alcohol, mm -hmm. which regrettably makes them even more depressed because it's yes. a depressant. Mm -hmm. uh, but women weren't given that label. They were given the depression mm -hmm. or the mood disorder mm -hmm. label. But the same issue is there: hormones. And as right. men age and these things become more uh, present and relevant in their mm -hmm. life, they also need to consider have your hormone balances checked. If you get your hormones restored to your young, youthful levels, not your age cohort levels, mm -hmm. same thing can happen. The, right. the depression can go away. The libido can return. The energy can return. The the thought capacity, the memory. Every, so everything many of comes those back and you don't better. have to feel like... You're you're just waiting to die, basically, because that's what that that kind of gives you that loss of life is wonderful, it's enjoyable, it's something to be cherished. You just kind of go, oh, I'm just going to wait to die because I don't want to live like this. Yes, and so that's kind of a feeling of none of my faculties are working. I don't feel like myself, and my mood is low. So those are the things that both men and women feel when they come to me, and I, and and I often say, well. Let's try this. Testosterone is a mood elevator. So for both men and women, it's a mood elevator, and so is thyroid. So we always check those two things. If you have low thyroid, and we, we learned this over 40 years ago in medical school, that if your thyroid's low, you're depressed. So we need to fix the thyroid so that people who are, who are depressed because of their thyroid can be fixed without antidepressants. They can just be fixed with thyroid. So, so we look for that, and we get we actually cure a lot of the patients by giving them thyroid, and there's a problem with that. The thyroid numbers are skewed. They keep going down. Every year, the lab puts a lower number that's normal, and I don't understand that because the research doesn't support that. So for me, well, I don't know where this is coming from, but they're diagnosing fewer and fewer people with low thyroid. Well, there's also a problem in, in your practice because the two prevalent thyroid medicines one of them is, is not on very many of the formularies. The yeah, drug Armour Thyroid, which has been used since before Synthroid. It was the drug of choice for all doctors before Synthroid came out, and I don't remember when that was, the 60s. I wasn't practicing medicine then. I was barely alive. So, uh, But the, it was there before Synthroid. Armour Thyroid is both T3 and T4, and it is from pigs. Medical pigs, but pigs. So, <laughs> Are um, these doctors uh, pigs? Oh, they, they have. <laughs> don't go there. So this is from medical things that we use these, and we've been using these for 50 or more years. Yeah. So having said that, then all of a sudden Synthroid shows up. It was only tested on men. Everybody said it was great. It doesn't work very well for most women. So, so all of a sudden we're giving women just Synthroid because we're MDs and the DOs continue to use Armour Thyroid. So there's still this, this conflict between MDs and DOs which is still out there, which is kind of scary because we go through the same process to be doctors and to be tested and to go through our, our specialties. Well, but the data that you have, even as, as an MD, is that armor thyroid helps women more regularly than Synthroid helps women. Right. Mm -hmm. But the system is pushing Synthroid. But they won't pay for synth they won't pay for armor thyroid. Right. And armor thyroid is less expensive than Synthroid. So yeah, go it, figure. It's hard to, it doesn't make sense. Which brings me to the next point that Dr. Yes. Stoker made. And she was discussing all this, and almost as a sidebar at the end of her presentation, she said, you know, we've been talking a lot about depression, mood disorder, bipolar, all these different things, what treats them, thyroid. But she said, doctors get depressed too, uh, mm -hmm. whatever's going on in their personal lives, but also just the management of a medical practice and the responsibility of, of providing care, sometimes 24-7 for patients that mm -hmm. are significantly ill, is generative of depression. And she says one doctor a day in the United States commits suicide. And then in a survey of 15,000 doctors, 44% of them reported as depressed. And, and then they broke down into, she broke down to what she calls colloquially depressed or clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. And my assumption is that colloquially just means people say, well, I'm really depressed mm -hmm. and don't necessarily they have. They haven't been diagnosed They haven't been diagnosed yet. officially, yeah, mm -hmm. as, as clinically depressed. Well, there's, 
And that makes sense, but it's hard to go to a doctor and be depressed yourself and have them depressed and see if they're going to diagnose you yeah. or give you the proper thing that, I mean, when you're depressed, you're really tired and you really take the shortest path to everything. I've been depressed in the past and part of that was my hormones, actually. And that that is something that goes along with, also, I, I forgot to mention low progesterone, but low progesterone, low thyroid and, and low testosterone. So those things do occur and cause people to feel depressed. And and when you're depressed, you don't feel like you want to go the extra mile for anybody. You don't, I mean, even though you're a doctor, you were trained to do that, you don't feel good enough to put more effort out to take care of somebody. It's just like, here, take this, bye, basically. I mean, right. I don't know that I succumbed to that. I tried not to. So the primary hormones that you try to restore the balance on to the young, mm -hmm. healthy are the ones that you just articulated. The yes. Testosterone, estrogen. Uh, testosterone, progesterone. Progesterone, thyroid. And thyroid, basically. Estrogen, in very few women that I notice, but some, it actually elevates our mood some. But generally, it's a testosterone issue. Testosterone elevates it the, the best. Okay, so make, that's helping me because what you're saying is these things have a proven positive impact on depression and mood disorders right. and libido. Yeah, my patient, when we, we actually get everything fixed, and if they come in with low thyroid and low testosterone and low estrogen, we replace them. Then we tell them not to go off their antidepressants or, anti, or their Xanax or whatever for the first four months. And then when they come back in, if they're feeling much better, then we have them go back to their primary doctor who gave them that drug and say, no longer depressed. And, and they have to be weaned off of well, that's it. That's what I was just going to say. Can't yeah. just you, you don't just stop antidepressants. And if you've taken Xanax very long, you can't just stop Xanax. It'll make you anxious. So and, and I you used have to say to that come in my off practice of it as well. Slowly. Never play with your medical dosages by yourself. Mm -mm. And don't ever just decide, I'm not going to take yeah, this Yeah, don't ever just go off of them. That, <laughs> I mean, that will throw you. Always discuss it with your physician. Even if you're on hormones, the lack of that medication, it's a withdrawal. Right. That will throw you into a terrible depression, even if... You don't really need that medicine. It just is a rebound effect. So you really need to have your doctor wean you off. Yes. So that that's very important, and that was very important for for her discussion as well. But she she is she's you know she has a concern for both her patients and for other doctors. Right. And she's trying to educate other doctors to look at themselves as well to make sure they're not in that category of depression because it just doesn't make good healing to be depressed yourself and you're taking care of other people. So Absolutely. she's trying to take care of both communities, patients and doctors. And well, and, and one of her, she had a couple of themes that ran through her presentation. Mm -hmm. And one of them was that we have to break this old paradigm of looking at computers and lab sheets to try to find the answer mm -hmm when the person is sitting in front of us and that we right. need to talk to the person, mm -hmm. attend to them, look mm -hmm. at them. Remember the things that we learned in school about their affect display mm -hmm. and what does that tell us, what to ask mm -hmm. about. Uh, and, and her thing at the end of the thing was you, you need the scientific data, but you also need to listen mm -hmm. in order to learn what it's like for the patient. What, what are their symptoms? What are they struggling with? How can you help them alleviate these things? It and makes... that takes a different training than I got. Yeah. But but DO schools now are offering, because um, my daughter went to DO school, they're offering interactive tr training, how you interact with the patient, how you look at them, what are you looking for? I mean, basically what um, insurance wants is you to just sit there and go down a checklist, eyes, ears, nose, throat. I mean, things that you're not even supposed to be looking at for their problem today. Right. You're supposed to go off and it takes you as long with the chart as it does with the patient. That's a sin that should never happen. You should be able to write down what you see in the patient and spend more time with the patient, asking them what is going on with them and looking. I mean, I can look at somebody's eyes and tell if they're depressed because I've been depressed and I've looked in the mirror and I know what that looks like. It looks like your eyes aren't shiny. It's kind of a, a dull look on, on the uh, cornea. I used to say lights are on, but nobody's home. Right, but the lights don't look like they're on. Yeah, no, I know. They it. look like they're, they're just dim. So, I mean, it, it's a flat You effort. have to look at that. You have to look at them. Like, I have ADD, my legs move. I have to consciously stop making my limbs move. Right, right. You know, so you can tell if somebody has 
ADHD. You can, you know, you can look at many things, their hands, their nails, ask them about it, feel the, the temperature of their hands. Yeah. It can give you information about Especially that Especially about thyroid. But if you're looking like this, yeah. like this all the time, you're never really going to get that information. Right. You need to actually attend to, to the patient. Or if you send your nurse or nurse practitioner in for the first part of the, the session and they do all of that, take mm -hmm. the blood pressure, take the temperature, ask mm -hmm. about the medicine, then you come in. Mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with an elderly friend of mine mm -hmm. the other night about needing to go to his doctor and how should he prepare in terms mm -hmm. of information to take, in terms of questions to ask, mm -hmm. in terms of what he was most concerned about mm -hmm. in case the doctor didn't automatically ask those things. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, you have a responsibility here. You need to have this information at hand and be thinking about it when you go in the session with the physician because they're time limited. And if this matters to you or you're concerned about it, be sure to put it on the table. And most doctors are visual. So if you write it down in just like in, in bulleted points, right. what's wrong, what you think is wrong, what might not be wrong, what other things that, that are going on in your life, whatever you think is important, put that on a piece of paper. They can look at it while they're talking to you. Right. And they can kind of go down the list. And then at least you don't forget something. And the doctor has more attention because they're able to see it. And they so, may often ask, can I keep this and put it in the file? Right. So and, six months mm -hmm. when you come back in, pull that out. So it's, how are it's these It's very things? helpful, especially, yeah. for, especially for seeing your internist about some medical problem or some new symptom that you have. That's very, it's very important and also for specialists. So, right. so these conferences are immensely helpful and, and educational. And we enjoy going to them in part because we can come back and, and help share what we've learned with you. So please be aware that if you are aging, male or female, and your hormone balances are declining, that may be a reason for the depression, anxiety, and mood disorders that you're starting to experience. There are treatments that don't involve taking medications for that specifically that come with a lot of side effects that you may not want to have. So discuss with your doctors whether hormone replacement is the best answer for your issue. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.